All right, guys, so um, welcome to a video for pre-calculus. I'm going to work out three of the problems, three problems that we had that we were working out in class, and I'm going to work them out and, uh, so you can see how, how we can work these. Um, I'm working out number 25. Uh, this one's on page 317. So it's just to simplify this problem. Okay, so I'm going to look, I'm going to scan this problem carefully, and I'm going to see where I can simplify it. Uh, the thing that catches my eye first is this secant, this secant here. Uh, that can simplify into, let's see, tangent x plus sine x times 1 over cosine x, right? So that 1 over cosine x is a reciprocal uh, identity. So so something else that catches, me, catches my eye as I do that is that sine times 1 over cosine x will simplify, so I'm going to erase this, this will simplify into, it will simplify into sine x over cosine x. And if I look at my uh, quotient identities, I see that sine x over cosine x simplifies to tangent x. So this all simplifies into tangent x. And so now I notice that I have two tangent x's, and that will then simplify to two, oops, let me, that will simplify to two times tangent x. And, and I feel like the numerator is pretty well um, simplified. Um, and what will determine if I can go any further is what I can do with the denominator. So now, now let me finish off the denominator. Now I'm going to put my focus in there. And so this is my new equation. And my focus is now shifting to the denominator. And as I look at what I can do in a denominator, hmm. So as I look at my new problem here, I see two tangent x over cosecant tangent x. And I notice that these can actually cancel out my two tangents. And this will give me a new problem of two divided by cosecant x. And so the question is, what can I do from there? Cosecant, if I look at my identities, uh, cosecant is um, the inverse of 1 over sine, so this is 2 times 2 divided by 1 over sine x. And so then what I want to do, I want to get rid of that denominator. I want to shift this over, I want to shift this over into my numerator so I can multiply by the reciprocal, which is sine x. Multiply both sides by sine x. And that gives me uh, a final solution of 2 times sine x. And I think that's, that's pretty good. <clears throat> that's pretty much as much as I can uh, simplify that problem. And I'm going to leave that at that. Okay. So let's look at the next problem here. This is number 27. And 27 is the same thing. It wants me to simplify. Oh, and there's quite a bit there to consider. So let's, let's get this down. Let's get it over with here. Uh, cosine x plus cotangent x, all this divided by secant, secant x times cotangent x. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and scan the numerator, uh, just like I did with the previous problem, and see what I can do there. And I see two things that I can switch off here right off the bat. Uh, let me go ahead and get the reciprocal properties of these. This will give me 1 sine x times cosine x, and I already know what that's going to give me, cosine over sine x, that'll give me a cotangent x, like I did er uh, earlier with sine x. So let's see here, plus cotangent x is cosine x over sine x. So, and this is all over, all over secant x cotangent x. So I'm going to go ahead and join these together. That's going to give me cosine x over sine x. Cosine x over sine x. And you notice here that I have two of the same. So uh, let's see here. That's going to give me the same thing I did before. That's going to give me two times cosine x over sine x. All this divided by uh, and I'm going to go ahead and simplify uh, these two. Um, sec uh, secant x will, uh, will give me 1 cosine, 1 over cosine. 
x times cotangent x will give me cosine x over sine x. And I notice, that, I notice as, I, as I look at these two problems here, I see there's something that I can simplify right off the bat. And these two will cancel out, leaving me with 1 over sine x. Um, 1 over sine x. And if you recall from the previous problem, how can I get rid of that sine at the numerator, at the denominator position? I will need to multiply by sine x. And multiply both sides by sine x. Let's see, and that will give me a new problem of 2 cosine x times sine x over sine x divided by, uh, that's it, that's it. I think I've simplified that. Yeah, I, I've got rid of all of my denominator uh, stuff there, so I actually don't need this, this one here. So that's my new problem. This is my new problem that I'm working with right here. And um, I don't know if you see there, but there's something that I can get rid of, and that's my sine x. They, they will cancel out, giving me a final product of 2 cosine x. That's it. Okay, so I have secant squared x divided by cotangent squared x plus 1. Okay, so let's see here. What can we deal with? Um, what can we simplify in this particular problem? So I'm gonna, my eyes are actually drawn to this real quick. Anytime I have some, some trigonometric function with plus one, usually that's indicative of a identity in and of itself. So I'm gonna to look to my identities. Um, I go to Pythagorean, I go to my Pythagorean identities and I notice that cotangent squared x plus one is a, uh, an identity. So I can actually simplify that. I can simplify, my new problem can be secant x squared over cosecant squared x. All right, so that's my new problem there. So what can I do next? What can I do next? Um, I can simplify both of these. I can simplify both of these. Cose uh, secant squared x will uh, simplify to 1 over cosine squared x divided by one, uh, cosecant squared x will simplify to 1 over sine squared x. So my problem here is that I want to get rid of this in the denominator position. That's my new problem. I want to get rid of that. So just like my previous problems, to get rid of that denominator, I want to multiply it by its reciprocal, which is sine squared x in this case. Sine squared x. So hopefully you can kind of see where this problem is going now, um, because I have just gotten rid of everything in the denominator. And now my focus is on the numerator, and I have a new problem of sine squared x over cosine squared x. And that will simplify to tangent squared x. And that is my final solution right there. That's it. That was number, this was number 29. Okay, well hopefully working out these three problems helps. Um, I will be more than happy to work out more in the future. Uh, in the meantime, use this video and other videos I have to uh, aid you in your studying. All right, good luck in your studying.